What's up everyone, John from ERTV. It's time for another installment of my Dear John Q&A series. Dear John is where I take a detailed viewer question and then answer it in video form because some things just need a little bit more context and explanation, something that I can't just give a little comment reply to. So, if you would like to be featured in a future episode of Dear John, possibly, then just fire away in the comments section. I'm looking for detailed questions that are cool and unique, something more than just, oh, do you think rock is gonna come back to the mainstream? Or what do you think about this style of music getting more popular? I'm looking for something a little bit more out there. So fire away and you never know, you could get picked for a future episode. Today, I've got something that I found to be very, very interesting. And it's something that I've been wanting to talk about in a video for a while, but I haven't really known how to go about it. And this just was like the chip in the iceberg for me. It was like, finally, something went off in my head. And is chip in the iceberg, is that even a phrase? Is that a saying or am I crazy? Probably crazy. I really do think this is an interesting topic. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the quick turnaround in music. And I think there's several different people that have touched on it. And there are certain genres that are able to just churn out music very, very quickly. And then there's other artists who have notoriously taken their time in the past. Is there still a place for them or is streaming and everything, let's just take a look at it all and see what our viewer had to ask today. Dear John, with CD and album sales dropping, do you think there is going to be a rise in EP production as a way to find a middle ground between the time it takes to produce a full-length album and rising importance on streaming slash singles? First of all, thank you, Stephanie. Excellent question. Second of all, yeah, I definitely think you're on to something there. I think that overall in 2018 and just the current place that we're in in music, I think a lot of people and ladies and independent people are just trying to figure it out. It's like throwing something at the wall and seeing what sticks and what doesn't. And I'm not saying that everybody is in a guessing game, it's just really anyone's guess because people are so fickle these days, who knows what's gonna be a hit one week and what's gonna go viral the next. And in this day and age, especially in the world of rap, hip hop, trap dominating the airwaves, and just the mainstream in general, it's very easy to make a quick turnaround on something like that. You might notice some of these rappers like Lil Yanni have dropped three projects within the past two years or so, and even other rappers who have recently come out with stuff. Even Kendrick Lamar, he's not quite as quick as others, but that's because I think his stuff takes more time and is more lyrically potent. But look to other rappers like Logic, who are consistently dropping projects, regardless of quality. They're coming out and people are consuming them, and that is all that labels and other other people care about. They see the dollar signs and with little money to be made on streaming, at least much less than back in the rock star days of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, people are looking for a way to make a buck. And right now, mixtapes, commercial mixtapes that is, full-length albums that are easy to make and fund, and even quick EPs and one-off singles are a great way for people to just cash in and do something that doesn't require a ton of thought. And that has also come to be because of the rise of things like Ableton, GarageBand, all of these editing programs that make it very easy for really anyone to make music. Is the album a dying art form? No, I wouldn't say that by a long shot. The album is just becoming very different. And unfortunately, I think a lot of rappers in particular are really starting to butcher the album just because with streaming, you get credits to like debut on the Billboard charts just for each song stream that you get. So people like Migos are loading up their albums with 20 plus songs just to gain the system. Or Chris Brown, look at how many tracks he had on a heartbreak on a full moon. It's just insanity. The album as we know it is definitely evolving. And me personally, I like something a bit more traditional. I like 10 to 12 songs on my albums. If you want to release a deluxe edition, that's totally fine for more hardcore fans. But 10 to 12 or even 13 songs is really perfect for me. I like an album to be anywhere from 30 to 50 to 55 minutes tops generally, just because even with myself, and I would say most people who consume music, most people don't 
don't have the attention span to sit down and listen to something for say two hours or even an hour and a half, especially if the music isn't diverse and is kind of the same. And that's why a lot of these projects do feel very, very similar because they're made quickly and they're made in a very similar manner. Maybe it's the same producers, obviously the same writers, and it's all coming together very, very quickly just for the sake of having tracks. Now, I definitely miss the era of it taking like a couple of years to make an album, and I'm still very much a fan of bands releasing everything maybe every two to three years, at least in album form. We all know what happens when bands rush, and I think we could even look to a band like Weezer, who were really dropping an album every single year between like 2008 and 2011, I believe it was, and that run there definitely showed some inconsistency and some of their worst material. It brings out the worst in people when musicians really feel like they have to write, whether it's from a genuine place or from a recycled point of view. And if you're trying to keep up with the trends and trying to make people not forget about you just because of how quickly internet culture forgets about you, then that's not really a good thing. But at the same time, you kind of have to keep your name out there. So it's like, I understand, but it sucks all the same. With rock, indie, and pop, I definitely feel like EPs and singles are becoming a bigger way for labels and artists to get their names out there. I think bands in particular I've noticed are starting to release one-off singles. Look to Muse, for example. Yes, an album is more than likely coming at some point, and even Panic at the Disco did this before Death of a Bachelor. Hallelujah came out way before that album was even announced, and then Death of a Bachelor finally comes almost a year later. It's just their way of getting something out into the world so that people don't don't forget about the name and they want to please the fans because obviously this day and age it's so easy to see what the fans are talking about in forums or what they're tweeting about or if they're clamoring and begging for new music and they're impatient because they're seeing all of these other artists have such quick turnarounds and I think that that's why the quality of music is suffering as well. If you've noticed in recent days, I've definitely complained about some of these bands and their recent output. I've already mentioned Weezer, Panic at the Disco, uh, even some other bands that I've really enjoyed in the past just seem to be slipping in quality. And maybe part of that is due to pressure just in general, maybe not from a label, but just from people. And they want to put something out there that's going to connect on a massive level. And they don't know whether to do an EP, a single, or a full length album. And I think that the album kind of gets lost in the process, the whole art. I truly don't think that the album will ever die, and there's so many bands and artists still carrying the torch and making people care. They make fans care. And true fans, I do feel like actually care about the albums. I know I am one of those people, and I know tons of people that watch my videos feel the exact same way. There's nothing like digging into an album that's well made, well layered, well produced, well sung, well executed all around. Sitting down, pressing play on a 45 minute record, 12 songs for example, there is nothing like it when it really takes over you and consumes you. So there's always going to be people out there who want to consume that. And even though sales might be down in the age of streaming obviously dominating, I think that streaming is going to generate more interest in bands' back catalogs. People are going to have it at their fingertips if they want to get into The Clash. They want to get into Soundgarden. It's all right there at the click of a mouse or a tap of the finger. And that's the exciting thing. But at the same time, it's so very scary because the artist has no control over how much they're going to make or if they're going to be relevant a year from now. With one-off singles, I already mentioned the band Muse, even though they have an album on the way. But an up-and-coming band that I am a fan of that's been doing this is a band called Wallows. You might have heard of the show 13 Reasons Why on Netflix, and obviously one of the big stars there, the character of Clay, played by Dylan Nimmer, is in this band, Wallows. And his band has up to this point, I believe, released five standalone singles with no impending EP or LP announcement. And that's kind of crazy, but it's also frustrating for somebody like me who just wants to at least have maybe a physical copy, uh, maybe it's vinyl, a CD, something to get my hands on, or even a full-length album because it feels like so many of these songs, they have the ideas that stick well together, and I feel like they would listen well in an LP format. But 
we don't have that announcement because this is a modern era and they're a very young band and they're putting things out like that. In fact, another band that I really do dig, the son of Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day, his son Jacob Danger put out in the form of Mount Eddie another EP very, very quickly after their debut album, Chroma. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but I also have to wonder sometimes how quickly are we getting things? But if we look back to the 60s and 70s, it's been happening and it comes full circle. The Beatles, the biggest band in the world, were putting out an album every single year. And it just goes to show you that more often than not, you can put quality together, but at the same time, you are going to burn yourselves out. And I worry about that. I see new bands like Fall Out Boy even pushing themselves. Not that they're super new, but they're in this modern era and they're trying to compete and keep up just like everybody else. And I will say they've done it better than most in terms of their numbers and people actually still caring about them, even if the quality of the music has suffered some. I think that there's bands out there that can quickly put stuff together and are just very creative and it's an innate ability for them. But for those bands and those rappers, those artists, those pop singers that just don't have that flair about them and they're just trying to cash it in, it feels like it does affect the album because they're doing it just for the sake of, oh, it's a tradition, I put an album out. Just like these days, it's almost more of like, I don't even know, a promotional tool, rather than just like a game show visit when you go on a late night show to promote your new film or album or whatever it might be. As you can probably tell, I am very, very passionate about the album as an art form. It's something that I love to sink my teeth into, and just talking about it makes me want to go pull one of these albums off the shelf, put it on my record player, and listen, it's something that is an experience and I hope that future generations do not miss out on that. I hope it's not just killed by the super long, excessively bloated mixtapes or pop singers that come out with a 25 song LP. I mean, I love Ellie Golding as much as the next person. I think she's incredibly talented, but her albums are often excessively long and I think that it kind of loses people's interest, especially if they don't know where to focus their attention. These are all just my thoughts though. I do think that EPs and singles are going to continue to rise and I don't really like the rollout methods where people will just release like five singles in a span of six months and then put out an album because it kind of ruins the album experience for me. It just spoils it. That's why I have the personal rule of thumb that I do not generally listen to more than two songs before an album comes out if I can help it. That's just me. I recommend it just because I really think that it helps you experience the album better, especially if you know an album is coming out. Just save it for the album experience. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And please, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. I had a lot of fun talking about this, honestly. Thank you again to Stephanie for the question. And if you would like to be fe featured, ooh, messed that one up. If you would like to be featured in a future episode of the Dear John Q&A, just leave a detailed question down below, starting with Dear John, so I can find you. Glad you could join me for the end of the video. If you're able to support what I do here on this channel on Patreon, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you to everybody who is already donating over there on a monthly basis. You can can head there by clicking that annotation in the corner of your screen. The last episode of Dear John is right here, another recent video right over here, or my social media accounts linked in the description down below. I'll see you soon right here on ARTV.